joining at the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mayo, for those nice intro words. Today, I want to talk to you about Java sealed classes and Kotlin sealed classes. And I promised this to be slideless. And what you see right now is not a slide, right? It's a Miro board. I work for Miro. We do boards. Uh, that's why I use, of course, Miro boards. And in case you want to follow up with that very small Miro board, please scan the QR code, and then uh, you can you can have those uh, information. Uh, Mario gave a longer intro than I wanted to introduce myself. So just in case you want to follow up with more social media stuff I do, please follow the links. Um, I do all of that in my spare time, as Mario correctly said. So I'm head of engineering the, the teams that I serve. Uh, we own backend representation of all my robots, which is a lot. Let's go into the topic real quick. I start first with Java sealed classes and then uh, Kotlin sealed classes. I want to show you some code. I want to do some live coding with you. And uh, at the end, I'm happy to get your questions. Java sealed classes what was actually the point that, that made me pro, um, propose this talk. Because with uh, 17, the JDK 17, which is LTS, uh, I came across that. I used uh, Kotlin sealed classes before. I was interested on how does it look uh, in, in Java. And once I dive deep into that, I found out it existed as preview already for with JDK 15. And the main the, mo the main point of sealed classes in Java is that, and by the way, also sealed interfaces exist in Java uh, to define their permitted subtypes. And it can look like this very simplistic example here. We, we would use a keyword sealed. We would define our class and with the keyword permits, we would define the subtypes that uh, for, for that sealed class. And in the definition of the subtypes, uh, we would have to extend the, the parent class and we, will, we would have to use uh, keywords like final or others um, to, to make that sound for the compiler. And that setup, um, had, Java comes with that setup with, the, with some constraints that are important to keep in mind. So those subclasses, they must belong to the same module as the sealed class. And they must explicitly extend the sealed class with the extend keyword, for example, if you use a class. And uh, you'll have to define modifiers. I showed you final before and sealed, non-sealed is also are also options. Now let's look at how Kotlin sealed classes look like. Uh, in my mind, those are super enums. So this is not an official definition or an official uh, description, but still, this is how I think of those. And the reason for that is that in Kotlin sealed classes, you define a lot of subclasses, often as data classes. And those data classes often uh, save state. And there are super because um, you are very, very free in how you define those subclasses. And I hope later I can also show that to you. More like an official way of describing Kotlin seal classes is that those uh, allow developers to fix type hierarchies and also have a handle on who is allowed to create new subclasses and who is not. All right. That was it for the introduction. Now let's uh, look at some code. This is IntelliJ. This is some Kotlin code. And this overall project does the following. Um, it reads a GitHub organization and prints out the list of repositories. And, uh, and I hope my, work, my code works right now. So let's check it out. The build is successful and this looks also good. So in this specific organization, I have two repositories and they are correctly read. So that's the organization uh, in case you want to find it on GitHub. And I also share the link later with you. And now I have one function and that function uh, verifies the GitHub organization. So I'm going to use a library. The library is the library uh, is the GitHub API library for, for Java. It's initiated by KK. He was also the uh, initiator of the Jenkins CI server. And um, that library 
uh, provides a GitHub object, and that GitHub object uh, has a method. Uh, sorry, has a yes, it has a method that get me the organization, and unfortunately, that method can uh, throw an I/O exception. And in this implementation, if an I/O exception exception is thrown, it returns null. And in Kotlin and in many other languages, we don't like to return null. And now with sealed classes, I try to explain to you how this code can be improved. Before we can actually improve the, the, the function itself, we need, or I, I need to start uh, a new sealed class um, that, that holds those data that, that I want. And for that, yeah, is it possible to increase the uh, font size a bit? Yes, let me do that. Oh, wait, I thought it was possible. Maybe in view or something up there. Yeah. Um, maybe there is. Uh, so let's assume I'm going to do, I'm going to use this. Would, would that help? Yes, perfect. Looks very yeah. good. Thank you. Okay, good. I, I, I now need to switch from time to time back and forth <laughs> because um, I need to I need to create some classes, but whenever possible I, I go with the um with the presentation mode. So first I need to create a sealed class and I'm gonna call I'm gonna use the uh, I'm gonna call this class GitHub organization. And now I, I have the sealed class and now I need something in there. And for that, uh, I'm lazy, right? As any other developer, I'm also lazy. So I'm gonna use another sealed class that I wrote before. And I use that as a inspiration source. And now I enter the, okay, very good, that works. So, I, I use the same mechanics as in this sealed class. I want to be able to react on the success state, so the GitHub organization exists, or the failure case, the GitHub organization does not exist. For example, be, because there is a string provided that um, re references an organization that doesn't exist. So in the success case, I'm gonna define a data class, and in that data class, I want um, to hold the handle to the actual uh, GitHub organization from the library. And that is a GH org for me. And now the IDE is smart enough to, um, to give me a hint what type that could be. So that's the type uh, that I'm gonna use and I make it short. And seed classes in Kotlin, and uh, they request you to refer to the um, implicit constructor. And this is how I do this. And now I have a first data class for my seed class, which is for the success case. And now I'm going to do the same for the failure case. And in the failure case, um, there, there will be some error message. So something will tell me whatever went wrong, at least I hope so. So I'm gonna define an error and that's just a string because that's the error message. And as before, I'm gonna use the implicit constructor to make the, um, the compiler happy. Now I have this um, sealed class with two data classes. And now you may spot already the, the super uh, notion of the super enums. So this type is completely different than that type, right? And in Kotlin, you can, you can do anything you want and you can give it any, um, any type you want uh, for, those, for those data classes. And that's something that really makes it kind of super to me and that's why I liked so much the um, uh, the super part in in super events. So he's not happy with with that, but we don't need uh, this 
data class anyway. So let's look on, on how we can use this. So I need to exit the presentation mode for a minute uh, and need to go back to my original code. So here we have now uh, the function and I want to use uh, this data class. So I'm gonna, uh, wait, where is my class? Here's my class. I'm gonna put this on the side so we can see this. And now again, go into the presentation mode. And here's my function that, that I want to change. In the success case, what I want is I want a data class to be uh, invoked. And when once I do this, I need as a parameter this gh org that is of type gh organization, and this um, instance is provided to me with the get organization call. So now I, ha I have the usage of my data class and now the compiler is not here because the return value is different from what I defined above. So see here, I defined here that the return value is of type GH organization. It can be null or it can be an instance. And now the return value is different. Now I use my data class as a return value. And then the compiler is happy for the success case but unhappy for the failure case. And luckily, uh, I prepared the failure case. And now I can do something similar than in the success case. And I can use my failure data class in order uh, to hold, to have a container for this. And I'm going to use a localized message for the uh, for the failure case in, in case an exception happened. So now, from my perspective, the, the code of the function looks way better because there is no null returned anymore. And failure and success and many other cases could can be handled with the data class that I, that I called GitHub organization. You may notice that the footprint now changed. The return value is different. So let's look on how this function is called and how what we can do about this. So here we go. And here the compiler um, gives me yet another error. So the earlier the code was in a way that GitHub organization in line 43 can be null. So I had to deal with the fact that it's null. I used the let uh, statement to make sure only if it's not null, um, the list of repositories is generated and then uh, printed out. Now this method, uh, sorry, this value is of different type. So I need to deal differently with the situation. And uh, Kotlin has a nice way of dealing with those data classes, which is pattern matching. And what is used here is the when uh, statement. So when that value uh, has a certain type, we can ask for the type. And we start with the GitHub organization success case. And in case there is a success, we'll do something. And let's, let's do this something. <laughs> uh, I'm going to reuse some of the code I have down here. And now um, I need to provide the, the right uh, value uh, because the compiler is not happy with that it because this it uh, doesn't exist anymore. And here the right value is the eh org um, that I defined in the data class. So let me show you this one more time. See here, this is the GH org that is of type GH organization like the library provides. And that is exactly what the list org repo um, expects. And now we are almost ready to go, but I forgot one thing, which is whenever you 
you use pattern matching, um, this, uh, whenever you use pattern matching in, with when, it needs to be exhausted. And you, you now also see the, um, the hint that the IDE provides. And there are two options. One option is that you, that you say else. And I encourage you not to do that because this is a catch all. And in case you define additional data classes on your seal class, then you may forget to, to handle those cases differently. So I'm gonna be explicit. And I say, in case it's a failure, uh, I do something else. And in this case, I just say, print me the error message that is describing the failure on the command line. Again, I believe the code is much improved. Uh, instead of handling nulls with a let statement, we are very explicit because we have, an, we have a value which refers to a sealed class. That sealed class can be pattern matched and you have those cases that you defined in the data class where you pattern match on and where you decide what is the actual log logic that you want to do. This is logic number one and this is logic number two. So hopefully that whole code works. Uh, for that, I need to exit the presentation mode and uh, start the terminal one more time and start the code one more time. So hopefully that works. The build is successful, which looks good. And also the repositories are as expected. Now let's see how that looks in Java. Uh, by the way, uh, Mario, how much more time do I have? Is it? Let's you have around seven minutes more time. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, I won't. I won't be able to finish that in seven minutes. Uh, at least not what I what I planned uh, to do. Anyway, let me try to uh, give you a, a a hint on how it works with Java. So in Java, um, I prepared a similar situation. In this, the, the method is repositories. And uh, again, there is an IO exception that can be thrown. And if that happens, it returns null. And that's not the way I expect the code to be. That's why I want to change that. And um, I do change that with a new package. And I call it, so the package is only there for I call it repository and the package is only there because I want the code a little bit to be uh, ordered. And here, so I actually, I wanted to show you sealed classes in Java, but now I'm gonna shortcut and I start with a sealed uh, interfaces. In the code on GitHub, you, you also find the examples for sealed classes. So that's an interface. And what I want here is a GitHub repository. Okay. And again, I'm lazy. I'm gonna use another uh, code that I wrote before. And here, let me enter the presentation mode one more time. So I'm gonna use the sealed a keyword for the interface, and then I'm gonna define the subclasses. In this case, those are not subclasses, permits. Uh, in this case, those are records, and to define what is allowed. And it's one success case. I'm pretty sure you know what is the next, which is, yeah. Okay, now I need to define those classes. And for that, I need to exit the presentation mode. I'm sorry for this uh, jumping uh, back and forth. And I'm gonna do, again, yet another cheating. So I need a new Java class, which is a record. And it's a the success. Oops, sorry, this was wrong. 
this was wrong. Yeah, it needs to go here. I can't. And another record, which is failure. All right, and now I need to define what is the, the parent class, and I, I use the uh, implement keyword for that, and that's the parent class. And I do that for um, the success case too. And similar to the to the Kotlin case, um, I define an arrow string that uh, holds the arrow for me, and I define a gh organization object that uh, contains the gh organization. Now that looks promising. And now I need to go back to my method to change uh, the code. So let me enter the presentation mode one more time. Now I'm gonna return a new GitHub repository access in case list repositories returns me the list that I want. And now the, what's wrong about this one? Ah, it's a list. Uh, it's a list. Uh, let me fix that later. And also, what would have been an issue in case I wouldn't change this, so I'm going to change the uh, return value. It's, it's my data class. In this specific case, my sealed interface. And also for the um, other case, I'm going to return similar to the, um, to the Kotlin example, I'm going to return a record, which gets me the localized message in the error. Now, um, the list repositories returns a list, but GitHub repository is, has, does not have a list, but only one uh, organization. And that must be a list of each organizations. And now that needs to be imported. Hey, come on. Can you import that, please? Yes, import class. Yeah. Okay, good. That looks good. And now this needs to be imported as well. Okay. And now it still has this list gh repository was i wrong with with the definition that i did here yes i was wrong so that must be gh repository that needs to have a semicolon okay good now the function works at, at least from a compile perspective and there is still one problem because the return value is different. Mario, do we have three more minutes? Um, I think we can extend like yeah, a couple of minutes, sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, now I need to react on the on the um, success and on the, on the failure case. And what is so far expected is a GH repository um, item from the actual library, but what I provide 
is my own sealed interface slash the, the specific records that implement that uh, interface. So in Java, um, you would do um, take those cases with, with an if statement and you would ask this repos, which instance of is that guy? And the instance would be GitHub organization repository success. And if it's a success, then let's do something about this. And in case it's not a success, and the instance is different, um, in this case, then handle the failure. Oops, sorry. Now I need to go back. I clicked on the wrong thing. Sorry for that. So this is where I wanted to click. Yeah. So I need to go through the failure case. And now let's double check what is the error here. Ah, the type is wrong. So And now something it it doesn't make okay. Now in the um, in the success case, I can I can use the object retrieve. Wait, wait. This is this is strange. Um, so this was this was wrongly named. I'm sorry for this. This is really confusing now. Um, nevertheless, what what happens here is that I can iterate over this, and I can execute it for for each uh, that I wanted. That should have been called a repository and not block. This this was my bad. And in the in the failure case, GitHub organization failure, there is this error message. And similar to the uh, to the Kotlin case, I would just print that out uh, in case an error happens. And last but not least, I want to, to tell you one thing about this Java case. What is really nice about this instance operator is you don't only, ch only check for the type, in this specific case for the record type, you can also give it a label. And that label is a handle to the instance. So I can use that instance and I can call methods or uh, methods that are defined for that. Um, to wrap it up, if you if you want to compare Java and Kotlin and you come across sealed classes, from my perspective, there is no major difference. With JDK 17, Java really caught up, especially this sealed interfaces slash uh, records approach that Java now offers um, is from my perspective on par with, with the Kotlin approach. Personally, I still like the Kotlin approach a little bit better because the Sealed class plus the data classes, they all fit nice into one file. Whereas in Java, you will have interfaces and records, uh, at least in, in my version, in different files. But that's such a small difference that you can't really say one approach is better than the other. Um, in case you need to decide Kotlin or Java for, for a given project, other things like how, how good are the developers that you work with in one or the other language are way more important. The, the sealed class approach is, um, at least from a conceptual point of view, uh, almost the same. And I hope that code uh, helps you to, uh, to remember that. And in case you can't remember, please scan one more time uh, the QR code. You find down there the GitHub repository uh, with the code, um, also with the sealed classes in Java that I couldn't uh, live code uh, with you. And now I'm going to take questions if there if there is time for questions. 